Now, what kind of discussions did you have with Mello regarding role and specifically was coming off the bench broached? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, Mello understands right now. You know, look, I think ideally for him, he would still start. I mean, I think that's where his mindset is. He's never come off the bench. You know, obviously that'll be Terry's call. But, you know, I think the conversation, Jason, was, you know, make the decision to come back based on the reality that you'll likely come off the bench to start the game. If that's if that's not an oxymoron, I guess. <laughs> um, but he'll probably come off the bench. I think I think he can be featured more with the second unit. Um, you know, in a first unit where you have Dame, CJ, Nurk, right? Like, you know, with Mello last year it was different. But I think with, you know, depending on who starts at three, we assume it's Cub, um, you know, and Derek. You know, there may not be as many shots there for him. So being able to feature him with the second group, get him some post-ups, um, you know, have him be more of a target for plays with that second group probably gives him, you know, a higher usage with the second group than the first group. And then, you know, like Mel and I talked, Mel and I talked about, I mean, if, if his minutes get limited more into like the 20, 22 minute range, we're not as concerned about back to backs, right? We're not getting the wear and tear. We're not extending him. If he's having a night, you know, where he's got it going, Terry can extend and go longer. You know, if it's a third game in four nights, maybe he plays shorter minutes so we can kind of preserve them. Um, I also think what's important, it's guys get too caught up in who starts. It's really about who finishes games. And I think based on matchups, based on what we need on the floor, you know, the trust factor with Mello in terms of making big shots and understanding what it takes, as you guys all saw in the bubble, to close out a playoff caliber game, you know, that's where we'll need Mello as well. And we'll want him to be fresh in those minutes. Hey, Neil, didn't get to talk to you much about Gary Trent Jr. and what he did last season. With that, what are you expecting from him this year going forward? Well, hopefully more of the same. Um, you know, I think it just shows, you know, you know, when talent meets opportunity and hard work, you know, guys produce. And, you know, obviously, you know, Gary had played throughout the season, but, you know, not as much as maybe he would have liked. And then circumstantially, you know, Trevor had a, family obligation and Rodney was hurt and he kind of became the, you know, the default sixth man to a certain degree. And, you know, he took advantage of the opportunity. I expect him to build off that this year. I mean, he's probably one of the hot names coming out of the bubble. Um, his commitment on the defensive end, you know, everyone looks to the shooting and he was, he was, he was unconscious in the bubble. He shot the ball at a high rate, which we knew he could do. But the biggest thing for Gary was the energy and commitment he made on the defensive end. I think is the reason Terry had so much faith in him, you know, to keep him in games at critical moments. Our, our best lineup in the bubble was our closing lineup of Dame, CJ, Gary, Carmelo, and Nurk. Um, and that's a testament to Gary's hard work on the offensive end. I think he went from shooting 25 from three as a rookie to 41% from three as a, uh, as a second year player. But really it was, he was our go-to defensive stopper. I mean, he guarded everybody from LeBron to Ja Morant to, Kawhi and everybody else down there and that's why we're able to go seven and two and um, you know and compete in the playoffs so I, like I said I think Gary will build on it he worked as hard as anybody in the months after the bubble before um, we got back in the building and um, like I said I think he's he's what our league is about right now Jamie on the perimeter he's the guy that can guard multiple spots and he's become really efficient at knowing you know what the return on a on a three is versus you know twos off the dribble so He's found his niche in our league, what everybody's looking for, which is a 3 and D guy. And I expect him to capitalize on it for the rest of this season as well.